the dance. You can use that if you want to. No. It's already on. All right, now can you hear me? <laughs> All right, my name is Mike Moore. What we're doing basically is we're going around and we're training groups. Up to 20, up to 30 people. And we, we start at 09 in the morning and we go all the way up to the last hour was uh, 30, well, 32 hours we were with one group. These are my instructors. You notice we have Scott, I'm, I'm Mike. Rule Farron's in the back, he's my scout sniper instructor. Travis Somi, Sean McKay, who owns uh, Asymmetrical Combat Institute, who just got blown, he was gonna be here today, he got blown out. He works with uh, the CAG and stuff like that. And then Chris Cromer with uh, Krav Maga. I'm not gonna really have to talk about this, you can read. Everybody good? Combat casualty care. I stress hard on that because if you do take a casualty, what do you have to do? You have to survive, especially if it's your child or your wife. You gotta be able to make sure that you can sustain her or him if it's your husband. All TTPs have been combat proven. We're all combat vets. We've all been there, done there, got that t-shirt. The 100 mile drill. You can go ahead and read it. Can you drop off at 100 miles at a specified location, move to without compromise? Can you survive the elements? Can you survive the movement? How about navigate from point A to point B? How about negotiate in three days? 100 miles in three days. How many people could do that right now? Huh? There you go, five. Okay, think about our kit, three days survivability. And it has to be what, seasonal, right? It went from summer to autumn to winter in what, two hours outside right now, right? So we have our tactical assessment, our security, okay, hide side selection while we're trying to rest because we don't want to be compromised, okay? What about our weapons? What type of weapons do you always carry with you? How many people always carry a uh, an M16 with 300 rounds of 5.56 ball ammo in their vehicle at all times. Nobody does, but we always carry a pistol. One guy does, there you go. All right? I know what suits has in his truck, okay? And what about survivability? What is a tap rack drill? What is a combat reload? What is a tactical reload? How do you fight with a knife? How do you fight with your hands to get to the knife? How do you fight with your hands to disengage to get to your gun? It's all important stuff. Okay, our kit bags, three-day assault bags, think about it. I'm not gonna sell this stuff to you, I'm just giving you a heads up. There's all kinds of vendors out here, they got all the cool toys. Find something that works for you. Survival tools, just to name a few, sit inside this bag. A canteen cup, remember those old canteen cups we had? I bet, bet we wish I had, had a couple. Because what are they good for? That's right, boiling water. They fit underneath the canteen. So you have two in one combo. Now we have camelbacks with what? How do we heat up water now? All right, we gotta carry something separate. What about knife selection? How many people thought about knife selection? All right, what kind of knife do you carry, sir? Okay, SE knives, you heard about them? Great, great knives, great knives. But whatever type of knife you have, What's the backbone? Where's the sharp point at? Where do you cut with? Where do you chop with? What part of the knife do you use to do a blunt um, jab? What, what would it be? The butt of the knife, correct? Or the tip? Multi-tools, why are they important? Cut wire, cut, cut, wire, cut fence, okay? 
What else can you do with it? They got scissors up there, all kinds of stuff. So a multi-tool. How many people carry a multi-tool in their, in their three-day assault pack? Very important. Flashlights. The more looms, the better. The more looms, the better. But at 200 yards, what type of looms does it have? At 50 yards, what type of looms does it have? That all counts. Right, Suge? Pistol lights. How many people carry a light on their pistol? Guaranteed. It's got it. It's in the truck because we can't have them in here. However, think about it. If you don't have a light on your pistol and you have to engage, what does your minimum distance become to? Seven feet? 21 feet? Flashlight you're holding up? Think about survivability at that point. IDPA, how many IDPA shooters do we have here? IDPA is awesome, but they don't let you put a flashlight on your weapon. That don't make no daggone sense. If I can illuminate you, blind you, and shoot you at 25 yards, I don't have to go that extra 15, correct? Unless I want to go and clear you. Rifle lights. Everybody see that picture down there in the corner? How, how many people ever, how many people have lights on their AR-15s and your shotguns? All right, very important. Once again, you illuminate. You blind them, they see purple spots, you put two in their chest cavity and one in their skull. <laughs> Shotgun lights, the same thing. Shotgun is up close and personal. If you're shooting double out buck or slug, what, what is your max range? 50 yards? Okay, 50 yards at nighttime, then we have limited visibility, it, it doubles itself, okay? In the, in, the, in the negative category of that, all right? 25 to 15 to 25 yards is all you'll have. A flashlight does what? Blinds them, they see purple spots, fill in the rest. Okay, tactical assessment. Individual movement techniques and high side selection. Team, what do we work on the individual? Your stance, okay, what you consider cover, how to come up to cover. If I, if I have a tree and this is a tree and I'm laying next to it, what am I doing at this point in time? I'm using it for what? Okay, cover and concealment and for what? Stability. But at this point in time, in order to gauge targets to the left, what do I have to do? Come all the way up and around, engage. But if I'm back here, what do I have? I got 180 degrees at any given time, correct? And I can still shoot up and around. I can pile left, pile right. Those are some of the things we look at. High sight selection, what is a high sight? Some place for you to do what? Be safe where you're down. That's right, be safe where you're down. You want to crawl in this nastiest, thickest stuff where someone else is not going to go, where the possums and raccoons go. That's where you want to crawl. But a lot of people don't know how to do that, how to dog leg into your high sight. So therefore, you can watch someone pass right by you if they're following you and do what? Ambush them if you have to, right? Okay, team, how many people in here have a group? Okay, I see some hands going up. When we look at SOPs, when your group comes together, what is your SOP for enemy? Hand and arm signal. Do you have one? Who raised their hand? Huh? What is it? Suit? For enemy. I see the enemy. Upside down? Okay, that's what we're taught in 11 Bravo training. Infantry 101. If I see the enemy, what does this mean? What's that mean, infantry? Grunt back there. What's that mean? Same thing as doing this, right? I see the enemy. Put a gun on him at all times. Okay, what about your wedge formation? Who's the designated left security, right security? What about in a trail? You guys think about stuff like that? What about a defensive posture? Who's in reserve? Who's primary? Huh? Who's point? No, I want to be point. Okay, fire team patrol base activities. We put you in a scenario where you're, you go into a patrol base at about 2300, 11 o'clock at night. All night long until about 06, all we do is we probe. We see what your security's like. What does 30% security mean? One man up, two men down, right? You get the most sleep that way. But how many people can you really trust? When do you want to trust them? 
When your life depends on it or during training? Something to think about, huh? Firearm selection. Pros and cons to every one of these. Pistol, revolvers. Everybody likes a revolver. How many women carry revolvers? They're short and simple. Can you op operate a semi-automatic? Semi you have a hard time racking the slide. I call BS on that. I can teach someone how to rack a slide. I don't care what your gender is, how old you are, and what, it, what eats up motor, most of the energy from a revolver. Your wrist, your elbow, your shoulder. What eats up all of the, stuck here, the, the recoil and the energy from, from a semi-automatic? The slide does. The bolt. Does what? The slide comes back, you have the what? Spring and spring guide rod that eats up all the energy. So therefore you can put more rounds down range and you enjoy shooting more. When I shot my 38 with the sheriff's office, I shot it five times, 10 times, 15, I'm done with that. And I'm a big guy. I mean, women, we need to be able to shoot. Okay, I'm not a woman, however. Okay, but if you enjoy shooting, you go out there and you, you can take 100 rounds every time and you can drill a semi-automatic, you can put two in the chest cavity in one wear, okay? You'll have fun doing that. And that's what it's all about. Because <laughs> when it comes time, when it comes time, what kicks in? Your heart rate shoots up to 140 beats per minute. What's, what's going on at that point in time? The only thing you have is what? Condition black. What? Condition black. Condition black. You lose all auditory. Someone could be yelling at you, put it down, put it down, put it down, shoot, shoot, shoot. You will never hear them. The only thing you have to rely on at that point in time is what? Muscle memory. Your muscle memory. How you train in peacetime is what is going to kick in when you're walking from Ingalls at 6 o'clock in the morning. No one's out. You say, oh, I'm okay by myself. And you just became a target the moment you walked into Ingalls. Rifles. Storage is a, is, a, is a problem sometimes when you're carrying it around all the time. However, what can you do with a rifle you can't do with a shotgun? Oh, yeah. I, I had a Remington 870 in my patrol car. I took that thing out, and I put a SOCOM 762. It fit perfect. If I can shoot you at three, 400 yards, why do I have to get up close enough to shoot you with a shotgun? Something to think about. Plus, what do you have? How long does it take you to reload eight rounds of buckshot versus a magazine of 30 rounds? All right? Maneuverability with the shotgun. How many people are that proficient with a shotgun where they can load the shotgun under combat conditions? I mean, I have to practice on a daily basis if I want to do that. You have to become proficient. How many people spend that much time? I mean, I work at a gun store. I got guns around me all day long. And I play with a shotgun maybe once a month. <laughs> Ammo considerations. Full metal jackets. Why are they good in a combat condition? They feed, what else? Over penetration. In a combat situation, it does not matter. If you have a... a um, Jacket hollow point, what's it going to do? More cavitation, but what else? It doesn't over penetrate. Whereas you can have full metal jacket, you get what? That's right, two for one. We shot 62 grain bullets at AR 500 steel. We were at 25 yards. It left a 1 8 inch hole in that steel. 62 grain FMJs don't play. All right, we shot. Uh, 230 grain full metal jackets out of 45 at 25 yards at steel, and you saw the little things whiz off like spaceships. I mean, it didn't do nothing. Hit it, it was nice and flat. Kind of proves the point with the JSPs, how they mushroom. Cavitation, important. That's two rounds of Dobot Buck at 25 yards. How many are in the black? Five. I can put three rounds inside your chest at 50 yards standing up. There's no need to do what? Close the distance. Because I want to be able to kill the enemy or kill a threat at what? 
maximum distance, different types of shotgun shells. How many people agree with that? Weapon manipulation. Combat reload is what? What's the combat reload? When the weapon goes what? Dry. So therefore, you drop the magazine, you grab your next magazine, you insert. How many people practice that on a daily basis with their AR and their shotgun and their pistol? Because everything's different. Everything is different. What is indexing a magazine? How do you index a magazine? Okay, you index it the same way, whether the rounds are sticking straight up or they're down, mine are down. I index a magazine, I flip it, it's ready to go in. Whether a pistol or a rifle, everything starts where? On my non-weapon side, correct? Tactical pistol. Our tactical pistol course, you have to have 400 rounds of your selected ammunition and a minimum of two magazines. A minimum of two magazines. Tat rack drills, what are they designed for? Because of all the buildup and everything, our ammo, how many people have shot lately and have a squib? It happens all the time in our range. Everybody was producing ammo at so fast of, of a rate that they weren't even putting powder in, in the damn things. This is federal. A squib. Think about it. Tap rack drill does what? Okay, a malfunction drill. You get two rounds that won't feed all the way. What does that mean? Okay, that means there's a squib in there. And the bottom line is, look inside the, the chamber. Because at that point in time, there was, a there was a primer in there only, and it fired that cap right into the beginning of the chamber. And then you have to go to what? Your secondary weapon systems. If you're within 25 yards and you're with an AR and you have a malfunction, what do you do? Slap, pull, observe, release, tap, shoot, right? Negative. You go to your what? You go to your pistol. At 25 yards, you should be able to hit anything. Fundamentals, stance, breath control, aiming, trigger control. All these things is repetition, and that's what we drill on. CQM is my baby. I love it. We start off, oh, I went right into a precision rifle. It's 300, level one is 300 rounds of 5.56. Five, 100 rounds of pistol. You start at 15 yards. 15 yards. What I want you to do is develop everything that has to happen in a combat environment. Tactical reloads, combat reloads, sports. I'll throw in blanks inside your kit. Everything that you'll do, you'll create that on a 15 yard line. Therefore, when it happens to you in combat, you'll know what to do. Make sense? Precision rifle. We deal with bolt action 308, 168 grain bow tail hollow points. We have three different levels, level one and two. Level one goes out to 300 yards. We spend 100 rounds on the 100 yard line. At the 100 yard line, bolt manipulation. How many people have AR, I mean uh, a Remington uh, 700, 308, bolt action gun and got over a thousand pulls on it? That's a lot. But how many times do you sit there and play with your gun? Well, we play with our guns all the time, man. However, if you're sitting there and you're pulling that bolt, what are you doing? You're breaking it in. Most, most Remington 700s are not even broke in until after 100 yards, uh, 100 rounds. We go over shooting positions, aiming techniques, breath control, trigger control, and bolt operation. Bolt operation, bolt operation. We go into day scope. MOA, what, what is the MOA? And which is a what? It's a measurement. It's nothing but a measurement. That's all it is. A lot of people get confused with that. Nothing high speed, the Marines thought of it. Yeah. Effects of the weather. Effects on the wind, okay, the environment on the sniper. How long you been up on the scope? How many hours should you be on a scope? We did 30 minutes, we were switching out. It all depends who you are. Cold bore theory, what's cold bore theory? 
Huh? Well, cold bore theory is, is nothing but theory, first of all. And your cold bore shot will depend on whether your, your, your barrel is clean or if your barrel is dirty. The cold bore shot will be different every single time. The cold bore shot will be the one you will take. Why? Because your weapon will be what? One shot, one kill. Okay, but your cold, cold bore shot will be the one you'll be taking at 5 o'clock in the morning when the sun comes up at a deer. It's definitely, and did you clean your weapon prior to that, or is it dirty? It's, all, it's going to be different every, every single time. Terminal ballistics, we go into a lot about that. Because you need to be able to hit and stop the threat at that point in time. Know who my hero is, right? Okay, orienteering, topograph topographical map. It's real important. How many people can uh, know anything about the map? Okay, most of my military guys already know about it. What about orienteering, moving from point A to point B? Using a military compass. In your area of operation, do you already have topographical maps of your area? Do you already have that? A lot of you guys do. It's, it's necessary. And what we do is we go into everything. We go into modified resection. We go into intersections. We go into declination, contour lines, terrain features, and then we get into the compass. After we put the compass down, we go into polar coordinates. Now, Sean McKay, who is my uh, buddy, is supposed to be here to talk about this. He runs uh, Asymmetrical Combat Institute. Anybody ever heard of it? Look it up on the website, these guys are legit. They're all um, SFOD medics, every one of them. Acronym MARCH, who knows about it? Something to learn. We use uh, Tactical Medical Solutions, which is out of Anderson, South Carolina. The, uh, both of the guys are, are definitely medics, and they're both here from SFOD. So they have all the, the uh, current kit that's being used overseas. And these were some of the things he was supposed to talk about. And that's the end of my uh, short brief. Any questions? I was flying, huh? All right, thank you very much.